Hello, good evening, and thank you for welcoming us to your homes again this Sunday. I believe you've had a great week and you're expecting another good one. I'm trusting that God is coming true for you and your family um, as he is for us. I want to thank God for all the great work he's doing in our lives. I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity to speak and to share with you again. So we have been discussing Bible heroes and we've been talking about the principles that made them succeed, the principles God taught them, the way God treated them and what they practiced that made them stand out in their generation. So we have been sharing on Bible heroes and we've been discussing the principles that made them successful, what God put them through and the way he trained them up to become who they were and to be a light in their generation. We are learning these things so that we can apply them to our lives because I know every one of us wants to succeed. Every one of us wants to fulfill purpose. Every one of us, at the end of our lives, we want to be able to say, I did what God sent me to do. So this is why we are learning these things. So we have learned a number of them. We've learned last week, we talked about perseverance. We talked about work, um, very important. And we talked about relying on God. Today we're going to be talking about patience, which is closely related to perseverance we spoke about last week, but there is a little bit of a difference. We're going to be looking at three Bible characters today and we're going to be learning what, what helped them in their journey of patience. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord God, for another day, another opportunity to hear your word. Let your word come like a hammer. Let it come like fire. Father, let us hear you and let it bring about change in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. So I said we're going to be talking about patience today. I'm sure everyone knows what patience is. I'm sure you've heard about patience. Please be patient, be patient. You have to wait. We all know what it is. It's a bit different when it comes to the things of God because in secular terms, patient means waiting, tolerating, delay, you know, waiting for something to happen, that sort of thing. But really, when it comes to things of God, it is waiting but with expectation. Pastor always talks about patience and faith being twins to get to the promises of God. Patience, faith and patience. And we're going to be reading that verse in Hebrews where it talks about through faith and patience. So wait, patience is waiting with expectation. It's active. It's not passive. And this is what pastor says all the time. It's active. It's not passive. It's not just, okay, we're waiting and you just wait. No, you're waiting with expectation. It's like those um, virgins um, who are waiting for the coming of the Lord um, in Matthew chapter 25. And they waited and waited and then they slept off. But they were waiting knowing, were waiting for something. There was an expectation. And suddenly at midnight, there was a cry. The bridegroom is here. And immediately they got up. Because they knew, I'm sure, you know, if you, if you have ever been waiting for something and slept, if that has ever happened to you, you know that you're sleeping, but you're not really, there's, there's a part of your mind that is still alert. So that once you hear, you hear your name, it's like you're waiting, let's say in a waiting room or in a bank or somewhere. Once you hear your name, you wake up unless you're really, really tired and you know, just, but usually when you're waiting for something, even when you are sleeping, you're always it's a part of your brain that is alert. It's like when you're waiting for a call, you know, you're always, is my, is my phone ringing? Is my phone ringing? Because you're waiting. That is what this patience is. Waiting with expectation. So the other thing I've noted is that patience is an expression of faith, not the opposite. So the fact that you are waiting doesn't mean God is not coming through. In fact, I, I was looking at something and said, God 
always comes true. We are the ones who are out of time. We are the ones who get impatient. God always, always comes true. Now, there's a passage in Ecclesia, a verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. It says, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. My, my father used to say, say, say this all the time, that God is always the God of the end. The end is always better than the beginning. The end is always better than the beginning because by when God works with you, by when God puts you through the process, the end is always more glorious. So Ecclesiastes is seven. It says the end of a matter is better than its beginning, and patience is better than pride. You know, some some of the um, translations will say arrogance. Patience is better. So you know, some people, in fact, sometimes people don't say, oh, I'm a proud, so, 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 I'm a proud. No, patience is better than pride, which is why lots of people say patience is a virtue. Because patience is better than pride. Now, you know, there's this saying, um, they say the patient dog eats the fastest bone. And some people say the patient dog eats no bone at all. No, according to God's word, patience is a virtue. Patience is important. It's not true that you will not eat any bone at all. If you are following patience the way God has intended for you to follow it. As I said, it isn't just waiting. It isn't just waiting for everybody to finish eating, then you see what's left. No, you're waiting with expectation because you know that God is coming true for you. Amen. So I want us to look at a few people, just three people we'll be looking at today and what we can glean from their lives. The first person is Abraham. As we all know, God called Abraham when he was about 75 years and God made huge promises to him. I mean, at the start, you'd be wondering, how is this going to happen? At his age, he and his wife had no children. They just had a, a nephew who left them at some point. You know, you would look at it and say, how is this going to happen? And God kept saying, it. he kept reiterating it. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make you a great nation. It's true you that all the nations of the world are going to be blessed. And still, no child no seed hey um ishmael happens and still god says not him i will give you a son your own son from your wife he waited 25 years you know some of us have gone through a process of three years four years five years seven six months three months i was saying god where are you i'm forsaken is this what is going to be Abraham waited 25 years as an old man, not as a young person. Because if you're 15 and you have to wait 25 years, then you're 40. Life begins at 40, so. But you're 75 and you have to wait 25 years. Or you're 50 and you have to wait 25 years. That is a long time to wait. But did God come true? God sure came true. God sure came true. Amen. So... Patience is better than pride. I want us to read the passage from Hebrews chapter 6, from verse 12 to 15. It says, we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and I will give you many descendants. This is what God, God swore by himself. But if you have this anchor, you know, later on it talks about the anchor. You have this anchor. If you have this anchor, then you can hold on. You can be steadfast because God has said it. So we can put our faith on it and we can expect, no matter how long it takes, that God will come true. So this is the certainty of God's promise that after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how long you wait, you will receive what God has promised you. As long as God has said it, he will do it. It's just for him to say it. It's just for him to say it. In one of the miracles of Jesus, you know, the man said, just say the word. The centurion, just say the word. It's just for him to say it. You are certain that it would happen. Amen. 
chapter in the verse 19 of that chapter it says we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure firm and secure after he's waited patiently he received what was promised amen i also want us to look at joseph joseph um and i also look at genesis chapter 40 from verse 23 and would read the first verse or verse 41 you see J joseph went through a lot in fact some people say the span of joseph's suffering was 13 years about 13 years from when his brother sold him don't forget this 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 young boy had dreams he knew he was going to be great he wasn't confused about it and he was bold about it he spoke about it but it took 13 years for it to come to fruition and at every point he thought i'm almost there and it wouldn't happen at every point he thought i'm almost there he got into potiphar's house Potiphar made him the lord of the manor. You know, Potiphar, they said the only thing he cared about was his food. He did not care about... Joseph was in charge. I'm sure he had people under him he used to give instructions to. But all of a sudden, it was as if the rope was pulled from under him when he was accused. And he was thrown into prison. So he went backwards, not forwards, backwards. And had to wait another few years there comes pharaoh's cup bearer and um, his baker into the prison and there's so much to learn about joseph's story but today we're just talking about his patience and both of them have dreams and joseph tells them what their dreams are. and he tells the cup bearer who was going back and said when you go please put in a good word for me don't forget you know and you see he thought this is my destiny helper it is here you know, I should probably be out of here in the next few weeks. But what does this verse say? It says, Pharaoh's chief cup bearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought, which usually happens to us. You know, we pass one stage, we forget everything about what happened there. You know, you move to another country, forget everyone you left behind. You move to another job, you forget everyone in your previous job. I hope we are not this sort of people. But it happens when we move, we make new friends, we meet new people, we start a new, a new phase of our life and we forget those who've helped us. We forget, you know, on whose shoulders we have stood. We, we, we just forget. So he said, he, the Bible says he, he didn't give him another thought. He went back to his position. Two full years later, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of the Nile River. Two years later, two years later, and when Pharaoh started looking for an, interpret an interpretation of his dream, that was the day the cup bearer said, oh my God, oh, oh no. I have done this great, terrible thing. Now I have remembered what I should have done. But God, I believe God left it because Joseph's character was still there was still a little bit of work that needed is what my is what I believe and I've, I've heard this you know I've had this preached always that Joseph was still at a point where he felt he was going to help himself which is why he said put in a good word for him put in a good word for me rather he, he still had it in his mind I'll be able to get myself out of this mess. He hadn't gotten to a point where, Lord, I'm not going to help myself. Joseph, you know, hadn't gotten to the place where he's like, Lord, I trust you totally. Whenever it's your time, I'm going to get out of here. He still felt, maybe I could manipulate this a bit. Maybe I can work this out. When you go back, put in a good word for me. And, you know, it, for, it showed that he was still trying in his own mind. God likes to bring us, as we learned a few weeks ago, God likes to bring us to a point where we trust him totally. No man, nobody else. You're just you and God. God, if you don't bring me out, there's nothing else I can do. 
So he had to wait two more years. Two more years. And as I said, altogether it was about 13 years before, before he witnessed a turnaround. And it was overnight. It was overnight. So this overlaps with what we learned a few weeks ago. When you're waiting, you're waiting with expectation, but you're not waiting trying to manipulate what is happening in your life. The same thing happened to Abraham if we, if, if, if we, if we go back. Because they'd waited a number of years, nothing happening. Sarah decides, oh, I have a bright idea. Why don't you have a baby with Hagar? Not God's choice, not God's plan. And God didn't accept it. So God wants us to wait. What are we learning here? That when you're going through your process, when you're in your waiting period, and you're in your waiting room, don't try to manipulate results. Don't try to help yourself. Don't try to push things around. Don't try to say, God, you want me to do this? Just wait with expectation, you know? You're speaking God's word over your life. You're confessing those promises. Lord, this is what you have told me. I believe it, that settles it. This is what you have told me. I speak it into being. I speak it into being. This is going to happen for me. My life is going to turn around. That job is coming. That house is coming. That spouse is coming. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. I'm going to see it. I would experience the goodness of God in the land of the living. My children will live and not die. I will live and not die. My, my husband will live and not die. We will be healthy. We will be protected. You know, just keep speaking God's word. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Keep expecting. Keep expecting. Let your gates be open continually. That is what God's word says. So you are in a position to receive. You're looking out. You're in a position to receive. But you are not manipulating things. You're not trying to help God. Amen. And amen. And finally, we're going to talk about Job. So people talk about the patience of Job. Why? Because he endured suffering. He waited. He didn't budge. He didn't change. He just waited. The Bible says in James chapter 5 verse 11, he says, what a gift. And I'm reading from the message translation. It says, what a gift life is to those who stay the course. You know, people say life is tough, it's hard. What's the Bible saying? What a gift life is to those who stay the course, who go through the process, who wait patiently. You have heard, of course, of Job's staying power. And you know how God brought it all together for him at the end. That's because God cares, cares right down to the last detail. Some of us feel God has left me. God has forsaken me. God doesn't think about me. God doesn't remember me. It's the enemy who tells us those things. God cares to the last detail, the smallest detail of your life. Jesus said, the hair, the hair on your head is numbered, is numbered. Don't allow the enemy tell you otherwise. Don't allow the enemy tell you, God, you're not in God's good books or your, your file has been put under the bushel. God, God has not seen it. God cares to the last detail, the last detail. He's doing a work in you. That is why you're waiting. He's doing a work in you. And when it is complete, he will give you what he has promised. Amen. The Bible says God brought it all together in the end. Goes back to that verse in Ecclesiastes. The end of a matter is always better than the beginning. So when you begin great, know that your end is even better. Your latter end is even better. The end of a matter is always better than the beginning. And the Bible says of Job, God gave him double for his trouble. God gave him double. All those things he had, 7,000 days, five, God gave him double and gave him a family again. For everyone he lost, God gave him. 
So this speaks to restoration. Some of us have even lost things. So it's not even that we're just waiting for what God has promised us. We've actually lost. We've actually gone backwards. No, God is going to restore double. God is going to give you double for your trouble, triple for your trouble, quadruple for your trouble. All we need to do is to stay the course. We stay the course, then life is a gift to us. We stay the course. We wait with expectation. Amen. We wait with expectation. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 13. It's talking about, about the heroes of faith. In Hebrews, it said, all these people were still living by faith when they died. You know, this, this chapter is so challenging. I don't know about you, but it is so challenging. They kept waiting in expectation until they died. So sometimes even that is not the end. It's not the end. They were, li they were living in faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. Admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have been given an opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Talking of eternal hope here, not necessarily of earthly promises, but I want you to see this attitude of patience they kept expecting they kept expecting so don't give up don't say it's too late don't say it's done live a life of expectation and the truth is things come to those who expect it it's when you're expecting things that you, i mean pastor is, is is you started this new series of the magnet in you and I'm looking forward to hearing much more about it. I think Pastor is going to touch things like this. Because when you expect things, you draw it to yourself. When you expect things, you attract it. Amen. They were still living by faith when they died. Amen. Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 24 to 26. It says, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So how do you wait? You wait with expectation. You wait patiently. Sounds like tautology. You wait patiently. You wait quietly. Not complaining. Not worrying. Not anxious. In fact, in one of the definitions of, of patience that I saw, and this is like a dictionary definition, it talks about that you're waiting, you're tolerating delay without feeling anxious. So you're not just waiting and... Uh, is the, you know, feeling anxious is different from expectation. So you're not waiting and you're like anxious. Waiting and you're like, uh, uh, what would happen? Checking the window. Mm -mm. You're expecting, but you're not anxious. So you wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. And even, why is it important? Why? Why? Well, we've seen it all. It is good. Because we please God when we wait. As we said, it is an expression of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who comes to the Lord must first believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So we can't please God if we don't wait. We can't please God if we are not expectant, but patient. It is impossible to please God without faith. Two, because we inherit the promise when we wait. You get what it is 
that you've been waiting for. Imagine someone in an office waiting for um, a, a boss to come out to speak to him, maybe a very big politician or someone, and you're just waiting. And you wait two hours, three hours, four hours. This man isn't coming out. Let's say there are two people. One decides, no, 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 I can't wait, I can't wait. Ah, I've wasted my whole day. I have to go. Another person waits. And maybe it comes at 9 p.m. Maybe suddenly we're there, maybe at, at midday, 12. You wait till 9 p.m. In fact, I actually had a testament like this. Someone had to wait till late. But at the end of that day, he got a contract in hundreds of millions. So when you wait, you inherit the promise. When you wait, after you've waited, imagine Joseph just gave up. God, I'm not waiting for you anymore. I've tried my best. I've served you. I've done everything you wanted me to do. Still, you left me in this prison. I'm going to, you know, start doing something else. I'm going to look to something else. I'm going to try to escape. You know, I'm, I'm going to try to escape. You do that, you lose. You miss out. You miss out. Amen. So when you wait, the Bible talks in Hebrews chapter 6 again. True faith and patience inherit. Those who true faith and patience inherit the promise. Number number three is it builds character. So we took that one pleases God, two, you inherit the promise. Three, it builds character. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Look at the cocky kid he was when he was young and he was telling his brothers and his parents, oh, I had a dream, all oh, your stock was bowing down to me, everybody was bowing down to me and feeling very cool with himself. And then look at him at the end when his brothers came to see him. You see, this was a man who had been, who had developed character, who had lent patience. Even how he drew out, he, you know, he drew it out for long, the reveal, the great reveal to his brothers. It took a while, but it took patience to do that. You can see his character had matured. He had grown, he had learnt. He had forgiven. Amen. So it builds your character. Another beautiful thing about patience is there's a difference in your gratitude, in your testimony, when you've actually waited for something and you've got it. You know, there's a difference between someone who's waited 17 years to have a child and someone who just had a child in the first year of marriage. There is a difference in your gratitude. There's a difference in your appreciation. There's a difference in your testimony. And you're able to encourage others to wait. When you say, I waited this long for this to happen. So even if it's not happening for you, know that God will still come true. And that is what we are seeing from these characters we have just read. We are encouraged when we are waiting with expectation because we know if God came true for Abraham, if God came true for Job, if God came true for Joseph, then God will come true for me. We are encouraged by the testimony of those, or the testimonies of those who've gone ahead of us. And so many that we have heard and we keep hearing every day, it took so certain so amount of time, but God did this. Amen. So there is a difference and it's such a great blessing after you've waited and then you have an a great testimony, hallelujah. Again, I, I stumbled on this. Patient people have better mental health, believe it or not. Patient people have better physical health. Patient people make better decisions, yes. Because we know that people who make haste, make haste, haste, hasty decisions, usually make wrong decisions. Not always, but most of the time. But when you're patient, you think things through, you pray about it, you wait, you ponder, you discuss it, you leave it for some time, you make a better decision. You know, I mean, we were born in premaritals, talking about marriage a lot, you know, and I was just, I was talking to someone this, so I said, give it some time, because person was, you know, when, is, it, is it this person, is it not? I said, give it some time. It's what we call the time test. 
you know, pastors thought about this. When you give it time, you usually reveals things. You usually make the better decision. You usually see things you wouldn't have seen at the beginning. Don't forget, the end is always better. Amen. So give it time. Time is a true test of a lot of things. We become better people, better parents. You can't train a child if you don't have patience. Any parent will tell you, you have to have patience. You don't give up. I mean, on Father's Day, uh, Pastor Johnny was talking about it. You know, how long did his parents have to put up with that stage or that phase in his life? But they stayed steadfast. They kept praying. They kept bringing him out. They kept supporting him through that phase. And what happened at the end? God turned his life around. Imagine if they gave, gave up, disowned him, chased him out. What do you think would have become of him? Maybe his life would have turned around at another time, but it would have caused a lot of rift. He may have gone through more hardship. He could have been exposed to, 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 to much more than he already had. So you become a, you're a better parent when you're, when you're patient. You're a better spouse. In marriage, you have to be patient. You know, I said to pastor the other day, and I was like, can you imagine if you gave up on me many years ago? Because he's done so much work on me. Imagine if he just said, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. You know, sometimes it looks like nothing is happening. But stay, stay, stay. And the other way around, you have to be patient. You have to tolerate. You have to wait. But what happens at the end? You inherit the promise. Amen. So I'm going to encourage everyone. Begin to build your patience muscle. Begin to build your patience muscle. What is it you're expecting of God for 2021? You've not seen it yet. It doesn't look like it's happening. Wait with expectation. God will surely, surely, surely come true for you. Amen. Let us pray.